Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we're going to cover something a little bit different. I've had people sit there and talk to me all the time about how do I do what I do? How do I get on camera? How do I get up in front of people and talk to people? And I just want to let you guys know, a lot of it's an illusion. And I'm going to I'm going to peel back the covers a little bit and I'm going to show you guys that is really not as bad as you think. It does take practice, obviously a little bit. And I'm going to show you some examples. Some of them might be embarrassing or whatever for me, but that's okay because if we all learn from it, I'm okay with that. First off, I, I just want to let you guys know, if you hear every once in a while a little crying in the other room, I apologize for that. I have a four-month-old baby, and um, I just informed her that she's going to start paying rent, and she's not taking it so well. So we don't accept freeloaders around here. Anyway. Guys, let's get right into it. Let's start talking about how do I speak publicly in front of people and how did this all happen? All right. First off, you guys should know, hopefully that you know, that I'm, I'm also an introvert. Yeah, go figure. I hate talking to people. I hate being on camera. Believe it or not, it's true. Um, but I do both of them. Um, and I do lots of it and I do it against my own will. I force myself into doing some of this and that's because there's a need. And when there's a need, you have to capitalize on it and you have to take that leap of faith. Um, and, and that's what I did. So I'm going to show you guys some examples of how I write speeches, how I prepare for them, and how do I get up in front of cameras and do what I do. It's, it's really kind of odd. So let's let's go ahead and let's start immediately with how do I get up in front of people and do videos? Let's go ahead and search for one of my earliest videos. Let's see. Let's click on the channel and let's see. Let me make sure that you guys are still seeing this. Yes, you are. Cool. Um, let's go to videos and let's search. I've got 600 and some videos out there. And needless to say, that's a lot of videos. Let's find one of my earliest videos. Um, let's see, where's a search feature on here? There used to be like a, a search. Oh, that's so ridiculous. Let's search to... Okay, so there's the channel. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find some of my earliest videos so that I can show you guys some perfect examples of what, gosh darn it, and here I am back at this. This is very frustrating. Um, let's try Better Biomed. Isolated power system. All right. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at one of my first videos. Now, guys, it takes a lot to do a video. So you have to do scripting. You have to prepare yourself. You have to figure out what you want to record on video. There's a lot of things that go into um, recording some of these videos. And what I want you guys to notice is my first videos, I did them completely differently than how I do videos now. Almost everything was scripted out and often right off of screen, I had a large monitor projecting my script and it made things exceedingly complicated and it was uncomfortable and you already are stressed out because you're on video and at the same time, you're going to be stressed out because you might not read correctly, you might stutter. There's a whole bunch of stuff that goes wrong. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of my first videos and I'll show you how things are different than right now. Okay. Right here. There it goes. All right. So on my first videos, um, I use a visual reference behind me, but at the same time, you can almost see it over to the side. I'm kind of reading and, um, I'm trying my best to start ad libbing because I can already see that there's a complication. But what I want you guys to get used to is the fact that this uncomfortable in front of camera that you see in some of my first videos, and you know my first ones, because right here I say 06 isolated electrical system. 
that means that this is the sixth video I posted. It's really the first video I've recorded, but it's the sixth video that I posted. And uh, I did that on purpose so I could look back for moments like this. So 06 isolated electrical system. As I'm talking, it's, it's uncomfortable. I'm using a visual reference aid that's behind me, but I'm working through it, right? And you can kind of see some of that here. It looks like I'm comfortable, but I'm not. So one of the things that I just want you guys to know is that you, we all, we all are uncomfortable when we start in front of cameras, all right? And, and that's just part of the process. You have to get used to programming your mind to think faster, to be better. So what I want to show you guys is this is how my first videos were. Am I embarrassed by them? No, not really. Uh, this video here has done particularly well. I've got over 20,000 views on it. I have no problem with it. Um, the information's accurate. So that was really my goal is to get the message across. But these videos are also practice for me as a presenter to present to you. So everything that I've said up until this very moment is how I do videos now. This whole entire video is unscripted. This is all ad lib, every single thing. I have no idea what I'm gonna say in the next two seconds. And that is completely different to how I started doing videos, which you can see right here. So uh, this is one of the things I want you guys to get used to. If you ever get up in front of camera, it's gonna be awkward, you're going to get better. And when you get better, your brain starts getting programmed differently and you start doing things better as a person, as a technician. It's kind of crazy. So anyway, uh, I'm going to flash back to here because I just want to show you guys that I'm not reading nothing. All right. This is just me and you guys having a conversation. And that's how I changed public speaking because this is public speaking. Hundreds, if not thousands of people are going to watch this video. And I want you to know that now I have changed my frame of mind. So instead of getting nervous about covering every single topic. Now I'm having a conversation with the camera. And yes, this is still way different than talking in front of a group of people. It's still, you're still going to face, you're going to face the same anxiety. You're going to worry about whether or not you covered all the correct content. You know, all the, all the same uh, barriers are still there. And most of those barriers are up here. So the reason I'm showing you one of my first videos is basically to show you guys that it starts up here, all right? You have to change yourself and everybody learns things differently. Everybody does things differently. I'm not saying my way is the best way. What I am telling you guys is that these videos that I'm doing are unscripted and I do so purposely because that way there, if I, if I do something wrong or if I say something wrong, then it's truly what I think is how things are, should be. And if somebody corrects me on there, there's many of you guys are way smarter than me. And if you guys correct me on something, uh, especially on a technicality, then fine. Now we all know. And that's really my goal for all my videos anyway, is just to get everybody um, in the now, in, in the know, you know. So I, anyway, let's get back to it. Uh, let's do let's do another video where I show you my secrets for public speaking, uh, let's say at a conference. There we go, okay. So my next video um, that I'm gonna show you is actually a prep for, um, Let me switch the cameras over. Sorry guys, this is my first time doing uh, multi-point um, camera work. So this is a little bit tricky. Okay, um, PowerPoint, web browser. Sorry guys, let's do PowerPoint. There we go, <laughs> all right. Okay, so when I do a speech publicly, uh, one of the first things I do is a PowerPoint. and in PowerPoint, uh, that's pretty much the layout of the speech and it's not scripted. Again, it's one of those things I really want you guys to get used to, the fact that I don't script things out per se. I, so one of the first things I do when I speak in front of a group of people is 
I will come out and I will say something like, how's everybody's day going? You know, you always want to break the ice. The first thing you want to do is break the ice when you get up there. If there's technicalities, some people get really nervous and anxious when you have technicalities. Embrace the technicalities. I've been up in front of people, live mic. My video display system for my presentation just completely dies. And it's just you in front of, I don't know, 100 people. And what do you do? All right. Those moments can and probably will happen. And, and what I want you guys to get used to is the fact that you should embrace those moments because now it personifies you in front of your audience and you use your personality to get you out of those situations. So like in that, in that particular scenario, I, I went and I started talking about other times when I had similar things just completely fall apart. Or just use a, a little joke like, you guys ever have one of those days when you shouldn't get out of bed or something like that? You know, you say that to your audience, everybody has a laugh or something, and all of a sudden you immediately feel more comfortable. That's what you do to break the ice when you start a presentation. So uh, I should show you some of the things I do to prepare for my presentations because prep is a big part of public speaking. You uh, don't necessarily memorize what you're going to say, but you do memorize what you want to talk about. There's a difference. Memorize what you want to talk about means you do your research, you compile a slideshow presentation on your research, and then I want you guys to record yourself. There's a big one. It's something that not a lot of people do. Set up a webcam or something and record your presentation of you going through your slideshow and see how you do when you're recording yourself. Because you're gonna discover things that didn't transition well, or you're going to find that you did really well on that recording, and when you get in front of people, you're memorizing, what did I say on the camera at this point of my slideshow? And you remember, all right? And, and it's pretty crazy. So here, let me switch back over to my web browser. Of course, nothing's working correctly today. All right, there's my web browser. Okay, guys, so this one right here is a video that I did, and it was, it was in prep for my speech that I was going to give to the local HTMA. I had never given a speech in front of people before, not like this, not in a professional environment. And to give you size, you guys some gravity of this situation, this right here was a make or break for me. So this was a speech. I had just fo joined Phoebe, and I was only with Phoebe for a week or two when I uh, was asked to give a speech for the HTMA. And mind you, uh, in Houston, all the directors of all the major medical facilities, pretty much everybody that has anything to do with the medical or clinical engineering environment, um, they're going to be at this HTMA and they're going to be watching this speech. If I do poorly, I'm going to embarrass my company, Phoebe, who I just signed on with, in front of all their clients. And I will have potentially made myself unemployable for pretty much any medical facility around Houston. No pressure, right? It basically meant that if I messed this speech up, that I was potentially going to have to move to another city. Think about that. It's true. And, and this was in my mind, but I'm so determined not to mess this up that I didn't really let it affect me like that. Um, so one of the ways that I prepped is I made a video, which I gave out for you guys. I, I posted it publicly. And it's this one here called Social Media and the Future of Biomed. Whereas I went through my slideshow presentation while on camera and I did the presentation for you guys before I did it in front of the public. It, it's like a notch down on the stress meter, right? Even though many, many, many more people are going to see this video, you're still not doing it in front of a live audience. So if you experience technicalities or something, you can edit them out. There's a lot of leeway, right? So first step is to go and, and you create your slideshow presentation. 
Hold on, guys. There we go. All right. So your slideshow presentation is your first step. And let's go ahead and go through some of my slides. There is a, a structure to your slideshow presentation that I recommend everybody does. It allows you to break the ice and kind of introduce yourself before you have to get into the meat and taters of your presentation. And that allows you to relax. It allows your audience to get accustomed to who you are. And I'm going to show you my transition. So here's the first slide. And then immediately I go into my second slide, which talks about who I am. I mean, you are one of the easiest things for you to talk about because you know everything about yourself, right? So this right here is a good transition. Um, who are you? What are your certifications, your qualifications? What's your history? And then, uh, so I basically talk this right here. And then I go into some photos where I might describe some of the photos, some, some events throughout my career. And then I talk about why I'm no longer in the military because people ask me this all the time. Why am I no longer in the military? And then I tell them about my medical complications and how I'm so grateful for clinical engineering and biomed because it allowed me to transition perfectly from the military into civilian life. So that's why I included this slide. And then I talk about how um, I, I got into the civilian sector and how I felt about it and why I got into training. So then I transitioned into why I started doing YouTube. It gives uh, the audience a little bit more knowledge about who I am. And then I talk about more things about YouTube, like the scale of how things started out, how not very much was happening at all in the beginning. And then things start blowing up. And when they start blowing up, a lot more started, things started happening, met a lot more people. Um, I talk about the demographics, people that use YouTube as a uh, platform for learning. I talk about the countries that uh, have reached out to me. All right. And then uh, I get right into the presentation. So my next slide, I then say, and that brings me to social media and the future of biomed. And now I have the slide here to remind me now I'm going to start talking about my presentation. So and then I go through, you know, my slides. So I want you guys to notice a couple things about my slides. This one here is large. It's simple. And it's got all this color right here because that tells you when you go from this slide to this slide transition. So I've got a little clicker and I click, you know, um, to the next slide. I get to this one right here, and at this moment, I know that I have to go to this one. And when I start talking about this one, notice how I have these red arrows. I have a red arrow here, and I have a red arrow here. Those are visual cues for me, the presenter, of what to talk about on this slide. They also cue the audience. There's a lot of clutter on this slide. So they, they cue me in what I want to talk about, and then they cue the audience into what they should be looking at. And you will see I do the same visual cues over here on the left side of the groups. It gives me something to talk about there. And uh, Discord, I didn't have to actually do any visual cues on this one because I'm just talking about what Discord is because a lot of people didn't know. But notice, same visual cues up here. So I'm not scripting out each and every slide per se. What I'm doing is I'm adding a visual cue and I'm just talking about those visual cues to people. So I turn it from a speech into something more conversational because conversational is easier for you to process and it's easier for your audience to process more importantly. So notice I have two other view visual cues right here in the middle of the slide. I have blogs and forums. So um, this, these are word visual cues that tell me that there's two areas in MedWrench that people normally will spend their time on. One of them is forums, which is down here. And then I say there's also the bulletin board area, which is more like blogs. So that tells me to relate bulletin board to blogs. So these words here are words that I added to the slide just to tell me the presenter what to talk about on the slide. 
And I do that in a few of these areas. Let's see, not this one, I don't need it on this one. So on this slide here, you can see all these red circles. These red circles are all things that I added to kind of cue people in on what I want to talk about. So on this slide here, I'll talk about how 883 people viewed this one job opportunity. And I've gotten several people who have written me back. So that's why you can see right here, it says multiple biomed clinical engineering openings at this website. And down here, uh, you can see I have somebody that says somebody asked me to reach out to them. Um, you know, so basically that's the stuff. I walk people around my slide using all my visual cues that I added when I created the slideshow. And that's how I do it. That's how I do my speeches in public. It's, I use visual cues and then I, I, I do things like this right here. I say 1099 independent contractor. And then down at the bottom, I say every minute of your time is worth money. So I will actually read this right off the slide. I tell people that, hey, this photo right here is from the front door of my house. And these are all boxes sent to me by people to calibrate equipment here in my house, in my home. So I myself am a 1099 independent contractor. I do this. I don't just preach about it. I do it myself. And here's a slide to back it up. And down at the bottom, I say every minute of your time as a biomed is worth money. And I want people to start thinking about that. So it's not scripted per se. I have several visual cues like here and down at the bottom is my cue. And that tells me what to do. Where I as a speaker stumble is where I have a lot of data on the screen that I want to cover all at once, which is the next slide. So when I get to this slide, I have stumbled in front of people because I'm reading things off and I want to tell people more things about each one of these line items. But when you put a lot of words on the screen, you will, as a presenter, read them. And when you read them, you become a person reading something in front of people instead of more of a presenter. So I do very few slides where I have lots of words. All right. That's just one of the things I've learned to do. But notice down at the bottom of this slide, I have in red something that I specifically will read to people. It's very important. If I put it in a different color on the slide, it's going to be an essential note that I want people to take notice of. So down at the bottom of the slide, when I, when I go through like why contracts will be more common, at the very bottom, I say many OEMs will change the business model to trusted service centers, which are also regional contracts. And then I, I leave the slide up and then I start telling people why. This is my cue down at the bottom to start talking about this part of the topic. This is something that I can, it's, it's hypothetical. So I just talk about it conversationally. So I tell people that from my experience, there's going to be more trusted service centers instead of, you know, um, OEM centered repair technicians. And uh, this would be a region that is contracted out and since it's contracted out, you are being trained by the OEM. And at the same time, um, they have oversight over your quality and they control what you're trained on and how often your, your frequency of training. So they have oversight into your repair program. And this is this right here is how I present that to people. So that's why I have that red note at the bottom of my slide. I'm keen people in to what I'm going to talk about. And at the same time, um, I'm just conversationally talking about it, just like I am right now with you guys. Remember, nothing in this video right here is scripted. I'm going off my slide the same as I would in front of 100 people. All right. So um, that is this slide. Um, then I talk about, you know, um, up here, core competencies. Again, notice how the font is in a different color. That keys me in as a presenter. That is something that I want to talk about. All right. And let's see. All right. Uh, let's go down a few more slides. You can see up here, I've got things in red. That's stuff that I'm going to say. Um, I keep my banner the same at the top. See how it says social media and training. 
And then uh, the different aspects of training I have in red. So you can see I have core competencies, core competencies, prerequisites for away training, um, item specific training. So the red right here, it just grabs my eye as a presenter and I know that's what I'm gonna talk about. So I talk about everything that's on this slide. How, you know, this device right here, um, it's an item I never knew about, but a, a nurse trained her staff using the YouTube video. And because of that training video, that's how I as a biomed learned about this device. And that's what I tell people in front of, you know, groups. So I do take screenshots and I add those to my slides. Um, I do a lot of that and I, I build out my slideshow, you know, that's it. So here you can see identify best practices. Um, so one of the things I do near the end of any of my presentations, which I have like three or four different presentations I give now, um, I always have a slide that kind of triggers me and tells me, Hey, you are near the end of your presentation. So this tells me to either speed up or slow down. Okay. So this one right here, warnings on social media, I talk about, I could talk for 15 minutes about just what's on this slide if I need to. And I can make it really in depth. I can tell people about how I myself, because I've been doing social media, how it has affected me personally and how it's a warning to you guys, all right? So this slide right here, warnings on social media, when I get to it, I know that my presentation's almost done. And then my final slide, I do a slide like this, where I give um, a synopsis of everything that we talked about. So social media is the future of biomed. I talk about joining online groups, yada, 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 share best practices. And then what I don't have on this presentation, unusually enough, usually my last slides is, uh, do you have any questions or concerns? All right, so I have three slides that are at the end of almost every presentation. I have a warning slide, which is something like this that kind of tells me, hey, uh, this is near the end. Then I have a recap slide that talks about, you know, some of the stuff that we, uh, the key points of this presentation. And then my very final slide is questions or comments. And that is your closer. So guys, I know that this is probably going to be a longer video than what I really intended. But what I want to tell you guys is that there is a method to the madness. Okay. And I don't magically get up in front of people and start talking. I get nervous just like every one of you do, but there's a method to the madness of how to do it and to do it well, and your audience will never know the difference. I don't script out everything I'm saying when I get up in front of people, all right? Uh, what I do is I create a, a slideshow presentation. I then video myself doing that slideshow presentation, and I do that so I can review it. And sometimes I will write the slideshow, do the recording a month, three months before I'm due to give a presentation. I've got a presentation coming up um, that I've never done before. It's coming up in April. Well, I'm writing my slideshow presentation right now for that in April. It's a long way off, but I'm going to record a video of me doing the slideshow presentation. And then I'm going to watch that video a couple different times because as you watch something, you get familiar with it. You know your points better. You uh, just naturally uptake things much quicker and much better when you're watching a video. Even watching a video of yourself, you're going to memorize things better than reading a script, practicing the script. Oh, I didn't remember it. Oh, I'm stopped. So I don't do scripts. I create a slideshow presentation. I record a video of the slideshow presentation. And then uh, I take that same slideshow presentation and when I go up in front of people, I'm already familiar with the material. I know the stuff that I want to talk about because I watch my own video multiple times. It's, it's a win-win thing. But the other thing I want to show to you guys is that these videos, like the one right now when I'm talking to you, this is not scripted. I have programmed my brain so that I'm much, much better at doing ad lib. And you will find out that if you do videos for YouTube or whatnot and, and you record yourself and you watch that, your personality is going to improve 
because you're going to be wittier. You're going to constantly be ready for the next thing. I don't know what I'm going to say next, but I do know that I'll take pauses like right now and then I will carry on, right? So use visual cues, record yourself, and then uh, practice, all right? All right, you guys, I think this video is long enough. I just wanted to show you a little bit to my process. It is way easier than what you think, and I am making it my mission in 2023 to get more of you guys out there giving your subject matter expert material in front of your HTMA, in front of your MD Expo, in front of your, in front of your group. I got started a long time ago teaching biomeds as a junior biomed on things that I learned for that day because that's the way the military does it is you learn something and then you're tasked to teach the rest of the group next week or in two weeks. You have like a calendar and that's how the military did it. So I continued that when I became a civilian and now I'm just doing it on a bigger scale. All right. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned a little bit of something. Um, this is my process. This is not the best process, but I do think it's the best one for me. All right. See you guys next.